Hello and welcome back to the channel and to my review of the Shawcom SR629 repeater controller. I picked this repeater controller up from Amazon for £33 delivered here in the UK and it arrived fairly promptly. Um, the unit on first inspection looks to be quite well made if a little light. Uh, it has two input audio input sockets on the front of the unit, an A and a B there. A for the input and B for the output if you're working on simplex. It has a micro USB charging input and a selection switch which I'll explain a little bit about that function as we move on into the video. Now the unit feels a little bit cheap and a little bit plasticky if I'm being honest. Um, it comes supplied with some unshielded leads which uh, uh, have the Kenwood style of connector on here as you can see with a, a three and a half mil type jack. It also comes with a, a USB power supply unit uh, for charging. Again a little bit of overkill. Most people have got something so this isn't really required and strangely it also came with a, an Asus one as well. Um, it comes with a very small short micro USB lead but again this is the, the Asus, the Arcos sorry adapter but I'm not sure where that came from. Must have had a, a batch in from somewhere they decided to use. Um, a fairly uh, Chinese English sort of Chinglish manual not really much use. Um, explains the way the modes work on it a little bit. Uh, pictorially it's easier to understand than it is reading through it. Um, it explains you need to get a good separation in between the transmit and receive radius of at least five meters. Uh, on lower power you might get away with it but anything over a sort of a, a few milliwatts really and you're going to have to get some good separation as you'll see a little bit later on in the video as I uh, struggle a little bit <laughs> at first anyway at least. So again this manual explains the two modes you have this simplex mode where you receive on one and transmit on the other and then a full duplex mode where it will, one will transmit and receive on, on either so you can have a, a complete split there they also offer a, a duplexer as well should you want to go that route charging doesn't take very long it's only a small battery as we'll see a little bit later uh, charging indicates red when it's charging and of course that changes to green when it's finished charging and this unit came pretty much 90 percent charged straight out of the box um, moving on to the uh, to the input side, the jacks are identical. Um, on my unit, I did have to push the yellow one in quite firmly. It wasn't. I had a few issues at first because it wasn't quite engaging fully in the socket. So that's something to uh, to check. Uh, I thought I'd use these Florians and do it, try and set up a PMR link at first. I thought that might be a little bit of fun, uh, if not strictly legal. Um, but uh, I thought I'd just do it as a test. So I got the uh, the Florian set up there and set the. Um, I forgot how noisy the uh, the menu system is on these. I'm not going to play it to you, blow your ears off, but the um, the beeps are <laughs> really loud on these Florians. Um, so anyway, I got the Florian set up onto the correct channels and um, had a little bit of a play around, but I was I really didn't it struggle to get it working with between the two of them. I'm not sure why. I've heard reports that because the the audio on PMR radios is so narrow it does struggle through these repeater switches uh, it may well be the reason why it didn't appear to work so I got this set up as a as a simplex repeater mode and tried to key up and as you can see there it did pick up receive but it wasn't transmitting on the other radio I don't know if that's because it was, ju it was just too thin like I say that the bandwidth was just too narrow or, or what but it, it really wouldn't do it I tried a number of times um, tried pushing the cable all the way in and it didn't work so I had to change the uh, change it over for the uh, caisson uh, and then you can see there the receiver is pulling in and the transmit LED is coming on the caisson is transmitting there as I'm keying up on the talk about radio there key up there and the caisson is transmitting through the repeater so in theory in theory that function did work uh, but you'll see the issues that we have later and a lot of youtubers this is how they show the tests being done um, I thought I would program up some Radio Oddity R2s to try and use them because other people had said you know these were a, a good uh, radio to use but I just worry that on these cheap radios the front ends are not really up to the close proximity of the uh, transmitter so I set up a, a set of frequencies in there to try and do this programmed up the radios um, but we had no joy so I moved on to the UV82s now the UV82s being a little bit of a better radio 
and um, we put um, I got these ferrite uh, cores strap rings to put over the unshielded cables to try and help suppress some of the RF feedback I'd been getting during testing which was becoming to, uh, a bit of a problem I'd seen somebody on Amazon mention this did help so we got this basic set up with the mag mount from the car stuck on the windowsill there and then just the radio is laid out on the bed and then the other antenna is going to be the the rooftop antenna which is the antenna that i use here for all of the uh, um, base uh, receive uh, video uh, stuff you see on the channel so that that people have asked that is the antenna that i use a, uh, a white stick antenna just up on a 15 foot pole so we were definitely well five meters away from each other at this point so i was within the the recommended spec for the distance between the antennas and a little bit of brickwork and solar panelry in the way as well um, but we still had real problems with feedback so I decided to open the unit to see what was inside and as you can see there's not a great deal um, I mean I, I expected a lot less on the circuit board it seems fairly well populated doesn't it the circuit board um, but I wasn't sure what to expect if I'm being honest with you so I thought I'd take out the the PCB and have a little look at perhaps shielding it a little bit better because there is no shielding within this case at all and um, other more expensive repeaters I've seen offer do offer shielding and this has absolutely none as you can see it does have the uh, lipo battery just sort of strapped on the underside there with a little bit of protection from some rubber on the board um, it's well I mean it, it I should think it I think it would run this repeater for a fair uh, a fair while I think people have said sort of 12 hours isn't a problem and it will run if you leave it plugged in with the external battery charging it will carry on working I just thought I'd do some close-ups of the board for those people that are into the electronic side if they wanted to have a look at what chips are being used you can just freeze the video here and have a little look around and see what they're using and what they're doing uh, if that's of interest not that you'd want to probably copy one of these <laughs> anyway um, the case on the other side felt really flimsy you can see there there's a great big hole in the top of it it's obviously used for something else this case and if you push on that sticker you could just put your thumb straight through it so that's not ideal and it's a little bit poor to be honest so I dug out some copper tape which I use for shielding stuff uh, on my, my old quads and things like that GPS's and things and I'd had this kicking around for a while so I thought I would go to town a bit give it that um, lunar lander effect and uh, coat it with the old gold foil because it does really help keep the RF out this stuff it's good stuff so um, I it took a took much longer than I thought it was going to <laughs> but that's uh, that's about an hour later and uh, I got this thing fully covered and uh, I popped the PCB back in it and um, I did actually put a little bit of sellotape around the edges there just to protect it from any shorts and pop the case back on now after doing this um, it felt a lot heavier for a start <laughs> and uh, it it did really help with a lot of the bleed through and the and the interference that I was getting as you can see there the unit powered up fine so that was a real definitely uh, worth doing Right, I'm parked up about a mile away as the crow flies to see if we can do this little repeater test, but I'm not very hopeful. <laughs> I think we're going to suffer the same problem with the the signal is going to be degraded sufficiently that when it starts to transmit, it overrides the receive and it gets into a, a loop and you just get that horrible feedback. So, yeah, not holding out much hope on this. I could use much better radios, of course. I could use a an ICOM and a Yaesu, but the whole point of this was to try and 
do a little repeater test using these budget Chinese radios and the front end on these radios as is well documented aren't great. Right now I've moved locations um, oh, sorry moved antennas we've changed the receive the receive antennas now on the side of the house the transmit antennas are in the shack and it seems to be working a lot better now um, so I'm about a mile and a half away sat in the car and we'll just try it on the on the input and we'll see how we come up so I'm just monitoring the output of the repeater there on there this is G7 LNK testing, LNK testing. You see, there's a slight delay enough for me to record it look there G7 LNK testing repeater axis so yeah so that actually is working now so that seems to be the trick the, re the receive antenna on the outside of the of the house and the transmit antenna on the inside so we're getting somewhere we're actually getting somewhere we'll uh, we'll see if mick's about and we'll give mick a call right so mick is back i'm about a mile and a half way and we're going through the repeater now okay okay mick no right i'm i've now moved the antennas the receive antennas on the house the transmit antenna is on the in the shack literally on the mag mount sat on the air conditioning unit in the shack so and i'm now over beaumont road the other side of beaumont road um it's just stood outside the car and it seems to be getting into the repeater okay now because i've just checked it on the sdr so that's obviously the combination that seems to work well mick uh, i don't know what you're receiving me like there go ahead Right, I decided to wrap that one up for now. Um, I can't say I can really recommend the uh, Shawcom repeater controller. Um, just the biggest problem that you're going to get, unless you use perhaps two decent radios for the transmit and the receive, and you separate your antennas really well, you're going to get a real problem with weak signals being enough to be detected but as soon as the the repeater transmits uh, the adjacent receiver then gets desensitized and goes into a loop a feedback loop and starts screeching and you get all sorts of problems so i think for me personally the uv8000 does do it it does have this function and it does work so i think if you're looking to set up uh, a, a simple setup then the uv8000 is probably the way to go or use one of the uh, parrot repeater type uh, systems which you can google and look at and they uh, record a section of audio and then retransmit it I think that's probably the best way the, the simplest way of doing a, a repeater like this um, other people may have had more joy with this I mean you could obviously use um, I could use the SDR for receive uh, that's another option and, and then really notch out um, and uh, the, the other uh, adjacent frequencies but then of course uh, the, yeah, and of course we can adjust the sensitivity of the SDR as well um, but then if you start whittling the, S the sensitivity down of the receive side then you don't pick up any distance signals into the repeater and you get into a situation where myself and Mick were where it was actually better going simplex than it was using the repeater which is the opposite of what you want so um, quite a frustrating test but I you know I, I don't want this channel to be everything is roses and every radio I test is perfect and everything that we do is great because you know it doesn't work like that in radio does it this um, the, this uh, you know setting up repeaters isn't easy and setting up um, even crossband repeaters where you're on different uh, VHF to UHF it's not easy to do and get working correctly uh, so it seems Right, with that, I'm going to wrap this up. This has been a quite a long video. Uh, I'll thank you ever so much for watching. Um, keep tuned on the channel. We might, we may well revisit this if I if I do find a way of doing it properly. 
I might do a short uh, a short um, recap and, uh, and and do something else with it, but I can't see me uh, really using a repeater function too much like this anyway. So it was just an interesting test. I thought I saw the box on Amazon. I thought I'd give it a try. Right, that's enough for me. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank you ever so much for watching. This is G7 LNK now going off and clear. Bye bye.